Hello there, it's Sarah from Paper Lovely. Thanks for joining me today. I have got part one of my 10 cards one kit using the Simon Says Stamp March 2021 card kit to share with you today. I am gonna go ahead here and jump right into number one. If you're interested as to what's included in the kit, you can check out the video I posted right before this one, which will give you a link to all the supplies and a closer look at everything that was included. So I have here used some of the blue cardstock that was included to create my front panel for my card. I'm going to be doing a slimline card. This is trimmed to three and three quarters by nine inches. I've taken three of the cut aparts and trimmed those out. And here I'm just finding the center of my panel so I can lay everything out. I wanted to stamp some of the brick images behind each of these three little cut aparts. So I'm going to place them down, making sure that they're nice and even, and I'll create some pencil marks so I can see exactly where those squares are going to be, so I know how to line up my bricks. Here I've taken that over to my Misty, placed everything down with my magnets, and laid that out. I'm gonna hit each of those little spots where the bricks are with some anti-static powder. And then I will stamp these out using some Versamark ink. Go ahead and press that down. It's a little tricky with that top one up there just because um, my panel doesn't fit perfectly in there. So I'm gonna stamp that twice, making sure I get a nice crisp image. And then I will grab some of my Simon Says Stamp Fine Detail White Embossing Powder add that on top of each of those. This is my go-to white embossing powder. It is really nice and crisp, does a great job. And then I'll grab my heat gun and go ahead and heat set all of these. I wanted to add a little something to help these squares pop a little bit more from that blue background. So I pulled out this black and white panel um, and it reminds me sort of of like the awning of maybe a flower shop. So I thought this looked really good behind each of these, especially with that market sign. I'm gonna place these down with some ATG. I wanted to make sure I could fit this all on one strip. So I'm leaving just about an eighth of an inch border um, after they're trimmed around each of them. I loved this black and white stripe paper. It, it almost has sort of a brush look to it. It was not a perfect stripe. So I wanted to be able to use this on another card. Here I'm gonna go ahead and trim each of these out. Just making sure that's all nice and even. I'm gonna grab my eraser and get rid of that center pencil line. I don't need to worry about the others because now that I have the border behind each of those, that's all gonna be covered. I've added some foam dots behind these and I'll go ahead and pop them into place. I really love the look of these slimline cards. I had previously done some. They seem to be getting really popular right now. So I'm expecting more of them to come. I wanna give you guys some more ideas to use with them. And I really, I love the different um, way that you can lay things out on these. It's a very new, fresh look. For my card base, I've used some Nina cardstock and I've trimmed that to four by nine and a quarter. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that inside out and stamp out my sentiment. I went with Hope is Blooming, Stay Strong and I'm using my Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. Now, somehow I managed to get that slightly off center. I, I don't know how I did that, um, even with my grid, but I had an extra portion um, from when I had trimmed out my panel of this blue cardstock. So I'm gonna place that off to the side and that takes away the look of it being slightly off center, so you'll never can tell. I've added some ATG to the back of my panel there and I'm gonna pop that here on the top of my card base. And that will complete card number one. I'm 
For card number two, I'm going to do a little bit of Copic coloring here. I really loved this window. I did end up using, I think, both of them twice, um, but the circular one is my favorite. It really reminds me of a lot of the houses um, that I see here in the city. It just has such a beautiful look to it um, with that sort of fancy curved top. I did leave in the full coloring for you, but this is pretty quick. I've just done a little bit of shading. Uh, the Copics I'm using are E15, E18, and that's for my window frame. And then I've used BG10 for my actual windows to give that a little bit of a glass look. I've pulled in some greens, YG25 and YG45, some reds, R43 and R35, a purple RV66, and then a yellow Y35. I will also have all of those linked for you on blog posts so I can take you right to the ones that I've used. So I have gone ahead and fussy cut out that window, just leaving a little white border around the edges. I here wanna create the look of some siding on uh, a house. So I have trimmed off a bunch of strips of Nina Solar White. These measure three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna add some ATG and just layer one on top of the other. I'm just ever so slightly, maybe a 16th or an eighth of an inch an eighth of an inch that I'm layering the next one on top of the one below and it doesn't give a whole lot of depth but it does really give the look of siding I was really happy with how this turned out and so the card base I'm using at the moment uh, is by paper tree ink it's a winter wisteria really beautiful purple uh, you will see <laughs> as I move ahead I had turned this around to um, help me get things laid out and I <laughs> I accidentally stamped and then glued my window on it upside down. So obviously that was not gonna work. Um, but for now, that's the card base that it's on. Here I'm laying everything out. I do have that sending hug sentiment that I had stamped out. I used some Simon Says Stamp in Intense Black ink for that. I will show you with a later card how I did that. Um, I stamped out a few of them and then fussy cut out the circles so that I would have them to play around with and, and see how I wanted to use on um, my card bases. So there I'm stamping out my sentiment, missing you and thinking of you. I'm again using my intense black ink. Now because this is uh, different layers, you will sort of see a line when you stamp that out. But if you're patient and you put some pressure and just some time holding that stamp in place, you will get a nice crisp look. I've gone ahead here, added some foam dots to the back of my window, added one along the bottom of my circle there, and now I'm adding some art glitter glue just to keep that top portion in place. I'll peel away all of the backings and then pop that down on my card front. I then grabbed a Nina panel, trimmed two four by five and a quarter, and stamped out the sentiment, I hold you in my heart and thoughts. And here's where I realized that I goofed up. <laughs> so um, that's fine, this is easy enough to fix. I will just take out my trimmer and cut off the uh, top portion of my card base. And we'll now turn that into a panel and I'll add it on top of another card base. Unfortunately, I did not have another card base in this same color. So I have pulled out one from MFT. This is called Periwinkle. It's just slightly lighter. Um, goes, it goes really nicely with the other purple. I'm gonna add some ATG and then I will place my panel down. I did overlap slightly. So I'm gonna trim off that little bit of excess that I have there. Every card base is always slightly different. And then I wanted to include some of that darker purple. Uh, so I did trim off a quarter of an inch of that. I'll add some score tape to the back. And then I'll place that along the bottom of my panel. I usually line mine up with the grid and then I'll place it at the top portion of that half inch. So I've got about a quarter inch on the bottom and then that quarter inch of color right above it. I'll add some ATG to the back of that and place that on the inside of my card base. 
And that will complete card number two. Here I'm giving you a look at how I stamped out those circles. These are a really solid stamp, so you're gonna wanna stamp more than once. This is where a Misty comes in really handy. I'm applying some nice firm pressure. And then along with that, I'm really letting that stamp sit on top of the cardstock. And that allows that ink that's on that, that mostly solid stamp to really soak into that cardstock and give you a nice crisp color. So once I'm happy with that, I will flip that over, do the same thing again. That way I have a few of these to play around with as I'm putting together my cards. I have grabbed the die that was included. It is so pretty. This script is absolutely gorgeous. And of course it cuts out the word beautiful. There is also a frame that goes around um, the, the outside of it. So you can actually pop this up on um, a separate sort of shadow behind it. I'll show you that in one of the cards in the next video. Um, but I wanted this to have a nice thick look to it. So I've actually trimmed it out three different times. I'm going to use some glossy accents and I'll layer all three of those together. And this almost gives it sort of a chipboard look. It's really, it's a, a nice thick look and it makes a really pretty element on top of a card. So the card stock that I'm using for this is MFT's Pink Lemonade. I will also use that for my card base as well. Just making sure I have everything nice and lined up there. And then I wanted this sentiment to read beautiful you. So I have grabbed this circle that says love you and I'm just kind of lining this up here, seeing how that's gonna work. I'm gonna again trim this and I'm gonna cut off that top portion that says love, but I'm gonna leave just a little bit of that there. So you can see I have that white sticking out. I didn't wanna have to be super careful when I place down my die cut. So I'm gonna grab my Memento Tuxedo Black ink and just fill that in. You'll never know. Um, it just will soak in with that black in the background and then I will go ahead and trim this out um, So I have a nice circle piece there or half circle piece I will again take that black marker and run that around the edge of my circle just to make sure I don't have any white showing Then I wanted to give this sentiment some pop So I pulled in that extra piece I had left over of the black and white strip and I've grabbed my Heidi Swap color shine I'm gonna add some drops of that all over, really concentrating on that left hand side where I'm going to place my sentiment so it gives it a nice sort of pop in that background and then I've just trailed it sort of up and off to the right hand side. Grabbed my heat gun there to speed that along and there you can see that really pretty shiny gold in the background. I know that the color shine can be really difficult to find, um, but there are other products really similar to this. So if I can find any of them, I will go ahead and link them for you on my blog post. I've added some ATG to the back of this. This ended up measuring, it really was just the leftover, but it ended up measuring um, five and a half by three and three quarters. So I placed that down and then I'll go ahead and trim off my excess. Now I'm gonna just line everything up, make sure I have it in the position where I want it. And then I'll grab my art glitter glue and put that U sentiment down in place. I am getting to the end of this art glitter glue bottle and I have to tell you, it lasts so long. I wanna say I've had this for at least two years, if not longer. I do have another one waiting in the wings when I need it. It has become one of my favorite supplies, especially using that fine tip applicator. It just makes putting things together so easy and you don't get a lot of mess. So that is one of my favorite finds over the last couple of years. I'll add some dots to the back of that beautiful, place it down, and then I have all of my uh, three little dots to my eye there. I'm going to layer those as well just to continue on with that nice thick look of my sentiment. For the inside, I've again got a Nina panel trimmed to four by five and a quarter. I'm gonna stamp out the sentiment, I hold you in my heart and thoughts. I will add some ATG to the back of that and place that on the inside of my card base. And that's gonna complete card number three.
For card number four, I'm gonna do a little watercoloring and stamping out this larger window here. It has sort of more of a cabiny feel to me, a really cozy look to it. And I've also added some of the uh, brick pieces as well. I am using the included Simon Says Stamp watercolor paper. I really enjoyed working on this. There was no pilling. Um, it soaked in the color really nicely. Um, definitely recommend this if you're looking for a good watercolor paper. I pulled out my Ganzai Tambi watercolors as well as my Santa Fe brushes. You guys know these are my go-tos for watercoloring. They're my absolute favorite. I try other things. I always come back to these. They are worth every penny. Um, so I had seen on one of the sample cards that Simon Says Stamp had included um, this really beautiful sort of turquoise blue window that another designer had done. Um, and I think they used Copics for theirs, um, but I, I thought I would sort of go with that same type of look here um, and pull in this really pretty turquoise. It just sort of sang to me when I saw it. And then for the bottom, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to add a wood box. And then, of course, I'll fill in um, my window and my flowers just to give that sort of a glass tin and add some pretty pops of colors there. I have gone ahead and fussy cut that out. I'm gonna add some pop dots there on the back. Now I did, again, because this has a nice uh, crisp edge to it, there were no flowers sticking out or anything, I was able to cut this right on the lines and I love that. Um, so I did go ahead and take that memento marker, run that along the edges just to make sure I kept that nice crisp black line on the border. I have also trimmed out some of the bricks here. These, because I had watercolored sort of over top of them, I had a little bit of extra brown on the edges, so I did give them a slight border as I cut them out. I'm gonna add some art glitter glue and place these down just to give the illusion of some bricks behind my window. I have gone ahead and pulled out a sentiment here I'm going to use on the inside and I'm doing this as a birthday card so I decided to go with um, celebrate you now <laughs> you'll see when I place this down I don't know how I managed but somehow it got crooked and it really bothered me I will fix that later um, but uh, for now I'm going to go ahead and use some glossy accents to fill in all of these little windows make them look a little bit more realistic Now I had this great idea that I was going to take my die cut and my sentiment and place that down on top of my glossy accent. So I thought, well, that'll just glue it in place. I can add extra where I need. 
don't do that. Um, I'm sure I probably have made that mistake before and just forgot, but it actually sort of sunk into the glossy accents and I really did not like the look at all. So luckily I was able to pull both of them back off. I added a little more glossy accents to fill everything in where it had sort of moved some things around. You'll see I have a little bit of that yellow left there that kind of stuck into the glossy accents. That's okay. I'm going to place this down exactly where I had it before. Um, so I don't need to worry about that. That'll be covered. Um, but definitely don't do that. Wait till everything dries. Um, I gave this a good two to three hours to make sure that it was nice and dry and ready for me to add something on top of it. So I've added some half inch foam tape behind the birthday wishes sentiments. That's from that Tim Holtz, um, phrase pack that was included. And then I grabbed my eighth of an inch uh, foam tape and I actually ended up cutting that in half. So I'm working with really like 16th of an inch. I know I'm crazy, this was really fiddly and detailed, but I wanted to have the popped up look of this sentiment. So to me, it was worth taking that little bit of extra time and fiddling around with this to be able to pop up both of these. So there, I have saved you having to watch all of it though. Uh, so once I have that ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in place. I will peel away all of the backings um, and then place that down really carefully. Um, and again, I'm going to make sure that I'm covering up the little pieces that were left behind previously so that none of that will be sticking out. So as you saw at the beginning there, I did go ahead and glue this panel down on top of a new card base. That was my way of fixing that Cricut sentiment. Um, these card bases are made with that Nina Desert Storm that was included. Um, here I'm going to again pull in my art glitter glue and pop down um, the dots for my eyes. And then that Celebrate You I just trimmed out of the back of that cardstock. So I will add a little bit of glue to the back of that. Use my ruler once again very carefully <laughs> to make sure that I am getting this actually centered. And I decided to use my art glitter glue so that if for some reason it was not straight, I would be able to move that a little bit. It gives you a little bit of extra time um, to move that if you need to. Those stickers are really sticky. And that is going to complete card number four. All right, we are on to our final card for this video. I have pulled out this really beautiful blue floral paper. This really sang to me when I opened the kit. I just think it's so pretty, the blues and the greens with that pops of pink. And I happen to have a card base made from Paper Tray Ink Berry Sorbet, which was the perfect bright pink color to match along with those little pink flowers. So I have trimmed that panel to four by five and a quarter, placed that down to right on top of my card base with some ATG. I also have this um, seed packet strip here. This measures about an inch and a quarter. I really just trimmed off one of the strips where it said seed, so I would have that going straight across there. Again, added some ATG and placed that down. I'm gonna trim off the excess there. I had a little tiny strip of that black and white left, so I decided to add that underneath, just peeking out slightly. And then I pulled in this cut apart that I'm gonna place down. And lastly, I've got this sending hug sentiment that I'm gonna pop up with some foam dots. And I'll pop that down in place. I have grabbed some of my Close to My Heart ribbon. This is a really pretty white cotton ribbon. I'm just gonna tie a little knot there to create a bow to stick on my tag. I will add some art glitter glue and then just hold that in place until that's glued tight down. For the inside, again, my trusty Nina panel trimmed to four by five and a quarter. And I'm gonna stamp out the sentiment. You are always welcome, hope to see you soon. I have pulled in this pink pattern paper, trimmed off about a quarter of an inch. I will, of course, add some of my uh, score tape to the back of that, peel away the backing, and I'll place that along the bottom of my panel. Add some ATG to the back of that and place that on the inside of my card base. 
And that will complete card number five. Here are a few close-ups of the finished cards. In the description box below, you'll find my blog post, which has additional photos and links to the supplies I've used. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a comment or a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.